Today we're going to make a dessert that's hundreds of years old. This is a dessert from the beautiful island of Madeira, Portugal. It's a dessert made with sugar and molasses. It's called boule de mel. Literally that translates to honey cake, but it's really, it's not honey from bees. It is the honey from the sugar cane that they're referring to. So a byproduct of making granulated sugar is molasses. It's also used in a lot of rums. In Madeira, they make a aguardent. All rums are made from sugar cane. Also used in the famous poncha, the cocktail of Madeira. And some nuns at the convent of Santa Clara put this dessert together. This convent still could be seen today. It's in the city of Funchal. There are still sugar cane producing mills in Madeira. You actually could go there and see those. There's a, even a sugarcane museum that one of them has in Calita, Madeira, which is a beautiful area to visit. It's kind of right in the middle area of the island. And just above that beach area, you could go check out the Sugar Mill Museum. So let's get to it. Let's learn how to make boule de mel so you can start your own family tradition. The first step we do is rehydrate our yeast. We're gonna make a sponge, kind of a healthy way to get the, a bread dough going. First, we're gonna inoculate the yeast with some warm water and sugar. You want the water to be 100 to 115 is ideal, because if it's above 130, you could kill the yeast. Let's check our temperature. So we'll put our yeast in there, pinch of sugar. We'll give that a stir. And this should take about 10 minutes. You'll see it bubbling up pretty good. And this recipe takes five pounds of flour, so seven grams, that's what the yeast packets are, isn't that much yeast traditionally for five pounds of flour, but we are fermenting this for like a 12 to 24 hour period. You could get away with using less yeast because you actually kind of want that slow process. Okay, now we're gonna melt the butter, lard, and molasses together. Put that in here of a pound and a quarter. And then after also a pound and a quarter of butter. If you don't want to use lard, you could substitute the portion of lard with just more butter. Now I'm going to add in the molasses. As always, I put the full recipe in the description area of the YouTube page or on my website, justcookwithmichael.com. It's been about 10 minutes since we added the yeast to the water and sugar, and it's nice and frothy, so I could tell it's active. From the five pounds of flour we're going to use, I'm going to take out about a half a cup, put it with the yeast just to get that sponge going. So we're just gonna let this sponge sit at room temperature until we're done with all our other preparations. You can give that a stir every once in a while. Okay, I have my molasses mixture warming up on the stove. Now I'm gonna zest the oranges and lemons. Traditionally, this dessert is made on December 8th the day of Mary's Immaculate Conception. Next, I'm gonna zest two lemons. For the lemons, I only use the zest, not the lemon juice. So I'll juice the oranges. I only have whole cloves and you need ground cloves, so I'm just gonna, you could use coffee makers to grind up herbs. Usually just make sure you clean it out well. As you can see, that's there. That smells so good. One ounce of cloves. You want to save your nice pieces of walnuts to use as decoration on top of the boule de mel, but I'll chop up the rest of my nuts here. And in this recipe, it's important to keep the ratio right between the flour, sugar, molasses, butter, lard, but you can vary it a little bit to your preference on walnuts to almonds. If you like almonds more, put a little more of those in there. If you don't like walnuts at all, you could leave them out. So, And also the candied fruit, you know, I'm using orange peel, but you also could use candied lemon peel. This is optional, but I always like to toast my almonds and walnuts. I just think toasted nuts have so much more flavor. I just put the nuts in a frying pan with maybe like a teaspoon of oil. Don't leave the area because it can burn fairly quickly. So it takes about five to 10 minutes of stirring over medium heat. And you just want to get them to a golden brown color. Okay, now we're going to mix the rest of our ingredients together, the flour, the spices. One reason why I like to melt the molasses and butter and lard early is because you want that temperature of that mixture to drop below 
130. That temperature is too hot and it was, you know, it got up to about 170. That could kill your yeast if you dumped it over your yeast. I have my five pounds of flour. I had to take a break and walk away for a little bit. So this sponge has been going for an hour. You can see how fluffy it is. It's just kind of helping to give it a head start. First thing you want to do is kind of make a well in the middle of this. Now we'll put our four tablespoons of baking soda. Now you want to mix that up. And now we could add in the rest of our spices. So I have my black pepper, my anise seeds, my cloves, it smells so good, cinnamon. I toasted almonds. Now I'm gonna add my toasted walnuts. I almost could use a bigger bowl. Now I have my candied fruit. I have some tart cherries. And this is where you could kind of mix and match. Again, I'm using tart cherries and candied orange peel, but you could use like lemon peel, some other candied fruit. I think it's the smell of that clove is already bringing back memories of eating this when I was a kid. Now I have my sugar. This is gonna be close. If you're at home and you don't have a pan this big, and I'm, I might need to go to it, but it's uh, even like a big roasting pan, like something you would put a turkey inside, you know, any vessel that's the right size should work. I don't think this vessel is gonna be big enough. I'm gonna go grab my roasting pan, and I think that'll accommodate this size of a recipe. Okay, here we go. Making a well in the middle of it here, and now I'll slowly put in my orange juice. Okay, and now I have my sponge we made with the yeast and a little bit of flour. Put that in. Now we're gonna add one cup of Madeira wine. This is the wine that's traditional in the recipe. If you can't find this, most grocery stores probably should have it. If you can't find it, you can substitute with a port wine, uh, something like a tawny port or ruby port, and also if you can't see that, cream of sherry is a type of wine from Spain that has a similar flavor profile. One cup. Now you just want to do this a little bit at a time. Try to really bring up that dry flour from the bottom, make sure it all gets incorporated well. What I'm looking for when I scrape the bottom, scrape the sides, I'm not seeing any more dry flour. So this is probably taking about 10 minutes just to incorporate the flour and all the ingredients together. See there, see how I'm getting flour there? You don't want to see any of that. I think a lot of the reason you let this sit overnight is to let it develop flavors, you know. So this process of mixing by hand, I would say about five minutes. You either could cover it with a couple towels. I have the top to this roasting pan. I think I'll just throw that over it and let it sit for 12 to 24 hours. And then tomorrow morning, we'll bake them off. I also have other desserts if you're interested. I have some queijadas on my website and also the very traditional donut dish from Madeira called malasada. All right, the dough's been fermenting for about 24 hours. I'm gonna butter my six inch cake pans. You also, I'll, I'll put the link to these on a Amazon. All a bowl that are made out of aluminum, they're about the same size, so depending on what you wanna go with. So I put about a teaspoon of butter in this cake pan. It's probably just about an inch from the bottom, and you know, these are probably two inch pans and an inch from the top. I expect it to rise a little bit. Pat those down a little bit, make sure they're pressed in well. My oven is preheated to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, now we'll decorate the boule de mel. I'm not pressing these in very far because I'm assuming the bread's gonna kind of rise and almost engulf the nut a little bit. This is kind of traditional, just a walnut with some almonds surrounding it. So I'm barely pressing these in. That's it, just something like that. Those look so beautiful. So I'll put this in there. This type of cake is done when the temperature is about 205 degrees. You could also put in a toothpick, see if it comes out clean. Yeah, this one's about 180. So they have a little more. It's probably like about 100 and 
90 degrees on average, but you could see signs of the cake being done, starting to pull away from the edge. The top looks like this. The very edge is probably set, but I'm still waiting for the interior to cook. It's been 60 minutes exactly, and the bread has reached 205 degrees internal temperature. We're good to go. When your cakes are done cooking, if you flip them over and tap them and they're not coming out, you might need to go around the edge with a knife and just make sure it's not sticking at all. All right, everything's baked. And you can see we got 12 cakes of varying sizes, five, six inch cakes, about three, four inch cakes, and about four, eight inch cakes. And again, to get these out, you just tap on them, come right out. Now you can make boulouche de mel. Start a tradition with your family. Go out and cook this with someone you love.